It will come as no news to anyone that the war in the Gulf has given rise to a war of opinions as events unfold on both the front line and the home front. Joining us today are two Americans with their thoughts on the Gulf conflict. From Los Angeles, actor Charlton Heston. Our other guest in Washington, D.C., journalist Christopher Hitchens. He is the Washington editor of Harper's and a columnist for the nation. And Mr. Hitchens, first I apologize to you for mispronouncing your name as we uh, went to a commercial break just a moment ago. Thank you both for joining us. And let me begin with you, Mr. Hitchens, and I'd like to ask uh, Charlton Heston the same question immediately after. How do you assess the progress of the war so far? How's it going? It depends how worthwhile you think it is to spend a billion dollars a day to destroy the civilian infrastructure of Iraq, to make a permanent enemy of the Iraqi people and the Palestinian people, and to risk the lives of many other people in the region and shortly down the road, many, many Americans, in order to establish Iran as the dominant power in the Gulf, which will be the main outcome of the war. Charlton Heston in Los Angeles, same question, sir. To begin with, I'm interested that you describe me as conservative actor Charlton Heston, Mr. Hitchens as considerably less conservative uh, commentator. Uh, you could have introduced him as liberal and me as considerably less liberal or simply introduced both of us. As to your question, I think postponing the war now would have multiplied it by ten times two years from now when Iraq would have targeted Israel with nuclear weapons. That's the answer to that. It's uh, war put off is not war avoided. Uh, does Allied success at Kofji, in your view, Charlton Heston, serve to boost morale and confidence for the Allied forces? When reported as they are increasingly, I think uh, that's a very large issue that, uh, on which I think a majority of the public agrees with me. Uh, in war, uh, journalists, along with the rest of us, are expected to avoid giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Now, as an example, I'm speaking of two very fine journalists uh, that work for your network. Yesterday, CNN confirmed that Bernard Shaw, when he was evacuated from Baghdad, uh, refused a military debriefing. His rationale was that, as a journalist, he was a neutral. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Switzerland? <laughs> I think uh, we also have the problem that Peter Arnett presents, he's a very fine journalist, the most experienced journalist covering the war. I think, though, he fails to realize that, in effect, he's become a volunteer spokesman for Iraq. He sees only what they show him. He can report only what they tell him. Mm -hmm. In effect, whatever comfort he's kept in depends on his pleasing them with what he says and how he says it. I took personal offense at the close of his interview with Hussein, for example, by the deference, unconscious, I'm sure, unconscious on his part, but increasingly present in his commentary, when he said, thank you, President Saddam Hussein. Uh, I, I don't want this to devolve into a dissection or critique of CNN's Sorry. role in coverage. Well, no, no, I, uh, please don't say that. I, mm -hmm. By the same token, we can't duck the issue. Mr. Hitchens, do you have any comments on it now that it's raised? Well, first, and I, um, with all due modesty, because it's not every day one gets the chance to debate the Middle East with Moses himself, I'm not a liberal. I'd much rather be called a radical. For another thing, I became a journalist um, so I wouldn't have to rely on the newspapers or the television for my information. I don't have to. Um, if I did, I would be quite unaware of what was happening in the uh, inside of Iraq, to Iraqi society. I've just talked this morning to someone who's driven uh, uh, across the length of the country and come out the side of the Turkish border who describes the appalling devastation of uh, what's obscenely called by President Bush uh, collateral damage, uh, and obscenely called by many journalists collateral damage in the one-party press and television that we have now that's being visited on the Iraqis. As to deference, really, um, it was only on the 25th of uh, July, after all, that uh, President Bush sent his envoy in Baghdad to address Saddam Hussein as Mr. President and tell him that uh, America had no opinion on inter-Arab border disputes. It's a long way from that and involves a lot of deference by the press not to notice that the United States has now appointed itself the arbiter of border disputes and inter-Arab disputes across the Middle East to the advantage of the extremists in Iran and Israel, both of whom are waiting to profit from this ridiculous war. Uh, Charlton Heston, let me ask you, and I'm wording this question just very precisely. I'm not asking you what you think about the war, but how you feel about the war. I feel distressed about the war. I feel as any, I was in a war. I feel deeply concerned about the lives 
of our people in the Middle East, about the lives of the Israelis who are targeted still by scuds and as I say in a few years would have been targeted with nuclear weapons. I, th I feel what Lincoln said when he was uh, re re-elected in his second term in the Civil War. He said, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us finish the work we are in. That's what I feel. Mr. Hitchens, mm -hmm. same question. Um, on this question of nuclear weapons, look here, no one is more in favor of denuclearizing the Middle East than I am, for example, and have been since rather longer than uh, the period that's elapsed since the 2nd of August. Um, the United States has just, in the person of President Bush, vetoed the nuclear test ban treaty. It has addressed itself to no other party in the Middle East that's acquiring nuclear weapons or has acquired them. These include Israel and Saudi Arabia, um, except Iraq. And it has decided to say to the Arabs that it will decide which of their countries can develop which weapons. I can tell you now, but you will find out later, the Arab world will not be spoken to in that tone of voice. They will not allow the United States to, to determine for them their defense policies. If you're for denuclearization, there's always been the option of an international conference on the Middle East and its regional and political problems, and that is the option that President Bush steadfastly refused from August 2nd till desert storm began and refuses now. This is a course of absolute folly. Let me ask a question to, uh, to Mr. Heston. Can he tell me clockwise what countries have frontiers and borders with Iraq starting from Kuwait? Yes, indeed I can. Those, those borders are going to be very flexible, I think. And Ir Iran and Iraq uh, demonstrate that. But uh, it's interesting, you can, you? Let, me, let me come to... It wouldn't take a minute. Come, let me come uh. to your comment. Kuwait, Bahrain, Turkey, Russia, uh, Iran. Exactly. You don't know where it is, in other words, and do you? You have no idea where the country is on the map. And you're in favor of bombing it now rather than Mr. later Hitchens. on the whim on the whim of a president. I, well, Mr. Hitchens, Hitchens, if I can interject, this is the sort, this I'm is not the sure sort. that the instantaneous command of the geography of the region. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think if you're in favor of bombing a country, you might pay it the compliment of knowing where it is. This is the sort of, of instantaneous minutes. barbarism upon which people like Bush trade. They, if you were asked to bomb Iran tomorrow, you'd do that. A year ago or two, the United States was on the side of Iraq against Iran. A few years before that, it was on the side of Iran against Iraq. Now we're fighting the Iranians' war for them. Why is this sort of public opinion so reliable? The veto of the nuclear arms pact has to do with our fear of Soviet nuclear weapons. Oh, come on. Our pursuit... You don't think it does? This is really? Do you really doubt that, that's Mr. Hitchens? You seem Mr. Hitchens, rather that's as extreme. That's true, Mr. Heston, as the, as the uh, supposition of yours that Bahrain, which is an island, has a common border with, with Iraq. I, don't, I simply don't understand why uh, Reaganite hacks of this kind are, are consulted for their opinions at a time when thousands of civilians are being killed casually. And Hobbiton called collateral, attacks called do collateral not concern damage, Called collateral damage by... Called collateral discussion. damage by the president and by the press. <laughs> this is an insulting process, and it's going to lead us into an absolute calamity. Mr. Hitchens, we'll you we are insulting before. in taking up valuable network time with an ad hominem attack rather than rational discussion. You have not addressed a single one of the issues raised. I've already given You're giving a, a high school geography lesson and a high school view of the consequences of the end purpose of this war. Keep your hairpiece on. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Heston, let me ask you why such a large proportion of the American citizenry seems to be not, I would say, so much in favor of the war, but certainly supportive of the troops, supportive of the president, and apparently supportive of the goals expressed. I think for the same reasons that Lincoln voiced, beyond question. The American people as a whole are not quite as swept by their emotional convictions as Mr. Hitchens has demonstrated. Gentlemen, I appreciate the chance to talk to you, Mr. Sir. Please, uh, please both stay there if you will. We'd like to resume our discussion in just a moment, but we, uh, we have to take a break for just a moment. Be right back.
We are hearing the shared views of the Persian Gulf War and the things surrounding it from two prominent people who uh, make their views known in different forums. One is actor Charlton Heston joining us from Los Angeles. The other, journalist Christopher Hitchens, who is joining us from Washington, D.C. Gentlemen, we welcome uh, the relatively free-wheeling nature of the discussion and <laughs> encourage you both to, uh, to jump in without waiting to be called on. One small point before we continue. Mr. Heston, you referred to uh, our uh, correspondent Peter Arnett in Baghdad as, and I, I am paraphrasing you now, not trying to quote you directly, in effect, I believe, acting as, uh, as a spokesperson for the Hussein government. I didn't say acting as, sir. I said an involuntary spokesman. He has no choice. As right. I said, he can only report what he is told and Sid, describe what it, where he is taken. And you, I didn't you, say acting as. All right, then do you question that? Do you question uh, that as the proper role of a journalist in his situation? In his situation, I think you've heard of, I'm sure even Mr. Hitchens has heard of the Stockholm Syndrome. When someone is, in effect, a prisoner dependent on the support of the people around him. He comes to oh, adopt their point of view. This is well, no, no, I, I'm sorry. I don't, and I, I hate to jump into this myself, but the point is that uh, Peter Arnett has it within his power uh, to leave any time he wants to. Uh, the, the notion that he is somehow in the power. No, he is, he is certainly the, a unique asset, sir. The question is whether he is an asset to our side or theirs. Look, the, Peter Arnett, this is insulting. Peter Arnett has covered every serious As war I since, said. Since, since as Vietnam I said. And, knows, and knows a great deal more about this about this matter than most of us. He's an extremely honorable and courageous reporter. He's nobody's Stockholm Syndrome candidate. He is, in, in, interestingly enough, he is the man to whom the American officer in Vietnam made the comment that the town had to be destroyed in order to save it, a process that's now being visited on a whole country, cheered on by people like Mr. Heston who don't know where it is. I was in Desert Shield myself, and if you're interested in the, in the, in the corralling of journalists, you have to look no further than what the Defense Department is doing with its pool system, which is a deliberate attempt to shield, to borrow a phrase, from the American public, what it is paying for. We have yet to see a dead body on our screens. We have yet I'll to be shown what the were... cost of this ridiculous war is in, in human terms. And, and a totally conformist system of coverage is imposed almost certainly unconstitutionally, but at any rate unilaterally, by the Defense Department. That is where your voice might count, Mr. Heston, if you wanted to raise your voice and say uh, in the Lincoln-esque tones that you affect that the American people are smart enough to be trusted with the truth before it's too late, before they find out with the calamitous outcome of the war. I'll tell you where you will see some bodies. The ultimate footage to come out of Iran will be just before they launch a chemical attack. He has threatened such an attack so far. He, it's every Iran attack now. he's threatened. Iraq, I mean. Uh, do you think I didn't know the difference? I, I know really? you didn't know the difference. Do you really? I don't know. Okay. I don't think anybody else thinks that. There will be footage out of Iraq showing gassed civilians. Hussein has already gassed his own civilians, his own citizens. He will take journalists to the site, show them the swollen corpses, and say, American warplanes did this. And that will be broadcast around the world and will be very persuasive to people like you, I have no doubt. Well, I think I'd really rather have another question now. Uh Talk about a new world order, then. Uh, beginning with you, Mr. Hitchens, uh, President Bush uh, is the one most associated with the phrase. The concept mm. of a new world order is one employed by the president uh, in his policy in implementing the United Nations resolutions uh, for the Persian Gulf. What does the world, the new world order idea mean to you? As you say, it is a presidential phrase, and I suppose that's because of its emptiness and uh, vagueness. It's, it's odd to me that he keeps talking about new world order because most of the time he wants to sound like Churchill and keeps comparing himself to Churchill and using analogies about Munich and so forth. The New World Order is a phrase actually taken from Hitler, um, and I don't really understand how it's become our objective. I don't say, of course, that President Bush is Hitlerite or anything of the sort. Um, but as it happens, the phrase has an unpleasant echo in Europe, um, a fact of which I think the President is unaware, as of so many other things. In, as applied to the Middle East, it's strictly speaking meaningless. Uh, it simply means that for the third time in uh, two decades, the United States has changed sides in the war between Iran and Iraq. You notice, though, that uh, we're now being told we mustn't pound the Iraqis too horribly. We mustn't destroy their country too utterly because we may need them again. The president said as much this morning in his collateral damage remarks. In other words, there may be another round. We may have to change sides uh, once more. So it, it could be that some good will come out of this. and. Um, 
Further billions will be spent on rebuilding what if, what if Iraq has been knocked down at the rate of a billion dollars a day. But if there's, any, there's nothing new or orderly about that, that's the old barbarous imperial order. Mr. Uh, Heston, the, the your... Role, the role that the United States has taken upon itself as becoming the inheritor of the British Empire in the region, a role in which it will fail as the British did. All right. Mr. Heston, your comments on the same question, does the phrase New World Order mean anything to you? I'm delighted to say that uh, Mr. Hitchens and I seem to agree on a point. I'm disturbed by the phrase New World Order. I think um, it has the echoes of the Hitler regime that he referred to, although I don't think that was intentional, as nor did he imply that. I am concerned, deeply concerned, about the future, the post-war future. I am absolutely convinced Hussein must be stopped, his war-making power nearly eliminated. Uh, it was uh, Gladstone, I believe, who said, and it's accurately, he said, a world leader, a leader of a country, a prime minister, a president, is like a man on a raft going down a river, he knows not where, armed with a pole to push himself off the obstacles on either side. Uh, that regarding the future is true, as the outcome of a battle cannot be, uh, as Clausewitz said, a battle plan exists only until the first shot is fired. Gentlemen, if you uh, can both sit there for just a moment, we'd like to uh, pause for a brief break and come back and wrap up our discussion, sharing your thoughts on the Persian Gulf War, dealing with one question among others, how you feel about the anti-war demonstrations that have been seen and heard in the United States. Stay with us. We are talking with journalist Christopher Hitchens and actor Charlton Heston. Gentlemen, the anti-war movement in this country uh, has been vocal, at least. It has been covered. The news media are accused of paying too little attention to the, to the, to the movement by anti-war demonstrators, too much by people on the other side. Mr. Hitchens, what's your thought on it? Probably they've covered it a little too much. The American anti-war movement is a fairly pathetic and contemptible movement at the moment. It, it like the administration, only worries about American casualties and has uh, talked only about body bags, to use another current obscenity. It, it appears to have no real protest against the, for example, cutting off of water and electricity to the capital city of Baghdad that the great General Schwarzkopf accomplished the other day. And I think it's, um, it's probably riding for a fall um, until it develops some principles. Uh, what would be um, uh, ludicrous there would be to say that it had been uh, overcovered in point of opinion. I mean, those who are against this war on principle and the policies that have led to it are very seldom heard on a television. The, uh, the space is entirely taken up by military experts and people who support the, the Bush, uh, Quayle, Schwarzkopf line on the area. Um, that is where I think the media uh, coverage has been at its worst. Mr. Heston, your thoughts on the anti-war movement? In this country, you get a chance to shoot your mouth off. I approve of that. I disagree with what to they hear say. It. It's very good of you. <laughs> does Thank the you, Mr. Hitchens? Does, does, no, excuse me, I haven't finished. Mr. Hitchens interrupted me. I think uh, they have a right to say what they want to say. I disagree with it. Uh, they seem, many of them, uh, very excessive, uh, which is typical. Mr. Hitchens described himself as a radical. That is, uh, I think, typical of radical opinion. It tends to be visceral rather than mental. Santayana said, and I guess this is a good wrap-up point, he who will not remember history is doomed to repeat it. I'm afraid Mr. Hitchens, in my opinion, falls in that category. If that statement was true, Mr. Heston, you'd be in for doing a lot of repeating of history, but I think the history of you and your uh, politics is just about coming to an end. Gentlemen, thank you for talking with us. Uh, thank you for giving me a forum here, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hitchens, thank you thank for joining you. us. All right. Uh, we have heard, of course, during the course of the past uh, half hour or so, a number of statements which involved assumptions, premises, which may or may not be accepted by many or all of our viewers. We chose not to challenge them. They were the expressions of opinions of the two people we interviewed. Our coverage of the Persian Gulf War continues in a moment.